I won't get a notification. Anita will still be here um, and she'll be making sure that we're all OK. OK, well, I have just got a notification that very excitingly, we are now live on Facebook, which means that not only are we streaming on Zoom, we're also streaming on Facebook. So for anyone who's joining from your Facebook timeline, hello. For all the people who have joined on Zoom, hello. Um, such a pleasure to have you join this evening. Also, I don't know where you guys are in the country, but I am currently based down in London and it is a beautiful day outside. So I just want to say thank you for choosing to spend your Thursday evening um, listening to me instead of, you know, maybe having a bevy in the sun or whatever you'd be doing on a Thursday evening so um, uh, yeah it's a great privilege to have you here and um, I'm really really looking forward to doing this talk because um, yeah, I speak a lot about technology but this is like the first time I've ever put together a talk like this which is sort of thinking about specifically technology um, for people with RA and also for you know just accessibility and I, I've really really enjoyed putting this presentation together so um, hopefully you get something out of it. Um, I will start officially in just two more minutes, just give the last few people to arrive. Um, and then I will start going through some of the content that I've been putting together over the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so I hope you find it informative. I also know that some of you have submitted your questions, um, which I've received beforehand because actually the chat function um, on this particular stream is closed. Um, we'd love to still hear your feedback though. So please do get in contact if you, if you do have anything extra or if you want to follow up with anything that I'm sure there's a way of their team getting it over to me um, but yes thank you so much for anyone who has submitted the questions and I will definitely come to those in the um, after the talk and hopefully also I cover some of that stuff um, in the talk it was quite reassuring when I got the questions through I was like okay good I'm covering some of the right stuff here Okay, um, let's officially begin, shall we? Um, I just want to say uh, my name is Georgie Barrett. I'm a tech journalist and broadcaster. And uh, four years ago, I joined The Gadget Show as one of their uh, new TV presenters, which was a great privilege. Um, I watched the show since I was little. Um, it's been around for absolutely donkey's years on telly. Um, and it is brilliant fun, you know. Uh, not only do I get to travel around the world testing out the latest in consumer gadgets, um, I also get to go on nights out with a certain Mr. Craig Charles, um, which I have to say is probably a story for another time. Um, but I, in my work, I get to do some pretty amazing stuff. I really get to see the technology that is on the sort of the, 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 the front line, the cutting edge of things. Um, so, for example, you are actually looking at somebody who has a world record. Yes, I am the person who has been in VR for the longest, playing one VR game. I played it for a total of 25 and a half hours. Um, and luckily I don't get sick, but um, the producers afterwards were like, Georgie, I know you've got a world record, but honestly, that was the most boring bit of television we've ever put together. They literally had about 25 and a half hours of footage of me just with this headset on. You can't see my eyes, not really talking to camera as I play this VR game. So um, yeah, VR doesn't always translate that well to the television world. I had a great time meanwhile. I was off playing Minecraft, building these incredible worlds. Um, I've also done some other things, like I've been driven around um, in an autonomous vehicle, through the streets of Las Vegas. Um, I've um, driven a super tank, raced against an Olympian on the flyboard. You name it, I have done it. Um, but today I'm not going to be speaking so much about the sort of weird and wacky world of technology, you know, the, the sort of robotics and AI, the things that are sort of, you know, are going to be pushing us to the next step. Instead, I really want to be speaking about, you know, tips and tricks on how you can use technology to aid your daily life. And it's such a privilege to be part of um, RA Awareness Week and for you guys to join me this evening. So thank you so much for tuning in. So what I'm going to be speaking about is just some really practical stuff on how you can optimise your gadgets that hopefully you already own or maybe you're, you're wanting to purchase um, to hopefully help with some of the things that you commonly come across that maybe make life a little bit more difficult. So the things that I'm going to be covering is, first of all, how you can optimize your smartphone. Um, so a couple of things I'm going to show you on um, the settings that you can do to you know, get the most out of um, using it and just making it a little bit easier when it comes to um, using your hands um, and dexterity and maybe using your voice. 
Um, then I'll be speaking about your um, working from home setup or if in the office, if maybe you're going old school and actually heading into the office. So speaking through things of like, you know, how you should have your monitor, like little um, tips and tricks for like nice keyboards to use, mice that you can use, mouse, mice, I never know. Do you call them mouse, mice? I don't know. Um, uh, to make sure that your um, laptop is set up correctly. Um, and then I'm also going to mention about home assistant. So that is your Alexas of the world or your, um, uh, your, your Google Homes. So if you do have one of those in the background, let me just say, uh, maybe it's worth putting on mute because I know how annoying it is when people keep setting off your, your Alexas because they keep saying the code word for them. So um, yes, do put them on mute as I'll speak through just some of the reasons why I really enjoy using my Alexa and maybe how um, a smart assistant could help you from around your home. Now, just a little like sort of um, caveat with all this is that, um, you know, I don't have time to sit down and sort of take you through exactly how you can go into the settings of every device that um, you guys own or have access to and show you how to change it. And I am going to do a couple of demonstrations on my phone to show you how you can change certain settings. But I probably will be going too quickly for you to actually sort of keep up and, and, and be able to follow along at home. So what I say is this, I'm sort of seeing this talk as just sort of throwing stuff out there to you to see what could, you know, what resonates, what maybe could help you. Um, and then really, it's just a case of and dare I say it, just Googling it. Um, and this was a trick that I learned when I did a coding course, um, maybe about four years ago. Um, but it turns out I'm absolutely useless at coding. But the one thing the course did teach me was that it's actually really, really useful um, to type anything. I mean, literally any question you might have into Google and someone would have very kindly put together a beautiful response for you, whether that is a YouTube video or a how to guide or the Google just bullet points the step by steps at the top of the page or maybe there's a forum with someone who's experienced exactly the same problem as you and they can literally just take you through it step by step so please 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 get into the habit of like finding a device looking up the name of it typing into google your problem or how you want to change a setting and i promise you it'll give you really really clear step-by-step -step instructions i mean only last week i for whatever reason wanted to change a sim card in my apple phone and i just couldn't get it out and i was like this should be so simple why can't i do this and you type it into google and you know some some lovely person has already uploaded and you know a beautiful youtube video that takes you through it step by step so um yeah google is your friend get used to just finding out the answers by typing it into your search engine now if you're not that confident with technology generally then um i would say it's really worthwhile trying to cultivate someone in your life who maybe is a little bit more au fait with gadgets and changing the settings on things um, and just have them sit down with you now the trick with this though is that when they sit down with you, instead of just handing over the device to them and letting them sort of do it all, sit down with them and you hold the device and you try and like go through the settings or you try and actually make the changes yourself. Um, because that's the only way that you actually learn how to get a little bit more confident with using these things. Um, and by going through the process, you just sort of actually build up your, your general knowledge with, with that. And often with these things, especially like when I'm working alongside people who, you know, aren't that confident with going in you know doing certain things on their phone you know, i'm thinking my mom people like that um you know they, they they sometimes press things by accident or they get themselves in a menu and they don't really know how they've got themselves there and if someone's just looking over your shoulder whilst doing that they can explain where it's sort of gone a bit wrong um, as if you're just trying to do it on your own and it's not working then it can be incredibly frustrating so um yeah that would be my tip of, on when you're cultivating someone to work alongside uh, the other thing is, is that I'm going to be sort of speaking about lots of different things. Some of them will be relevant to you and other bits won't. So um, even if you just take away one thing today that you're like, oh, actually, that would make my life a little bit easier. Um, you know, just just focus in on that and then write it down and go off and Google how to do it and, and hopefully, you know, like master that one particular thing. Um, I used to always say to my nan when I was trying to teach her how to use a smartphone, that I think like using technology is a bit like learning to cook. 
that once you get the basics right it's quite easy you can like go off and you can pick up a different recipe and you can put it together or you can adapt stuff and you're just quite confident in the kitchen and it's the same with technology if you just sort of start to get the basics right you can then pretty much pick up any new device or you can get your new you know um google home or whatever it may be and you just can sort of follow the instructions and use your general knowledge to sort of help you set it up so you do get better and better at this um i also just want to quickly mention here there are some quite good online resources um i know ability net they are a charity that has loads of um, online information and webinars and fact sheets and step-by-step -step guides um, about how you can use technology to um help your life and, and this is for people with with any kind of condition so it's helping technology be more accessible to more people but they have um lots of interesting stuff specifically for ra and of course nras themselves um they've got a whole section on their website that speaks about these different things about how you can um you know some of the things that i'm going to go through basically so do check out those resources as well okay so let's start with speaking about optimizing your phone now i'm going to try my best to do a little demonstration on camera. Um, so bear with me, I've got a sort of webca webcam set up to the side. I'm gonna be switching between cameras. It's gonna be a little bit budget. It's probably gonna be a little bit messy, um, but hopefully I'll give you a little sort of overview of some of the things that you can do. Again, just, um, just a sort of caveat here that I'm gonna be doing this on my iPhone. So um, this is specifically then designed for someone who has an iPhone, which uses the iOS software. If you have an Android, I'm going to be telling you how you can do it with an Android. It's roughly the same thing, but, you know, they call it a little bit different. The menus would look a little bit different, um, but hopefully it'll still give you a good idea for how to put all that stuff together. OK, so now what am I going to do is I'm going to change to if this works. Da da, my phone, complete with the background of my wedding day. So <laughs> do bear with if you can see anything of uh, yeah, personal interest, because that is my actual phone. Right. So what I'm going to do is just show you how you can change some of the settings in your phone to make the buttons a little bit easier to use, how you can maybe use your voice. So the first thing I want to do is show you how you can actually change the keyboard size. So this is really um, if you maybe struggle um, with dexterity in your hands or you can't, you know, sort of hold your phone as easily or, or go through the um, different keyboard settings as easily, then making everything just a little bit bigger will really help you um, when it comes to actually sort of clicking on certain buttons. So this is pretty simple to do. Um, sorry, I went into the settings of my phone. And again, this is the same with iPhone or with Android. Um, everything you'll find when it comes to sort of actually changing the cog of your phone um, is find the cog and click on it. So we go into settings there. Then you want to go down to display and brightness. And in here that you'll see at the end here, it says display zoom. And this allows you to go into once I press that and set it, you zoom and then it just resets for a second. And then as you can see, the whole screen is just a little bit more zoomed in. It's quite subtle, but it's enough that means that when you then go and you want to, you know, type something in, your keyboard is just a little bit bigger as well. And also just a note to say that if you struggle with the keyboard, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but you can change it so it actually turns into more of a traditional keyboard and you could even just use your fingers um, one by one instead of you know having to use your thumbs if maybe you don't have such good movement in your thumbs so that allows you to um, zoom into your um, just to sort of zoom everything into your phone now with android you'll be still going into um, your 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 settings and then you want to go down to display you're going to click on advanced and then you've got a sliding bar and you can zoom in like this um, on your sliding bar now if that is still not quite zoomed in enough or if there's still a button that you know you're slightly struggling to press then what i recommend is for you to go back into your settings again and head into accessibility and again this is the same with android and then within accessibility there's a feature here called zoom so if you go into that and turn it on what it does is it zooms in to your phone now you obviously wouldn't want to navigate your whole phone like that because that would be very difficult but how it works is that if you tap your with three fingers you tap it that then just goes back to your normal sort of screen size and i think i could imagine that this is how you predominantly use your phone but let's say there's something in particular that you want to hit you could do your three 
zoom. And then that allows you to then click a button on and off, or maybe it's a hyperlink. So with Android, um, this is called magnification, but it's exactly the same um, functionality. You just want to go into there. So that's your zoom functionality. Um, now, this is only um, attached to the iPhone, but I just thought I'd mention it. Um, if you maybe find the scrolling motion, um, especially if you're having to do it a lot, um, that sort of um, painful or difficult to do, then you can, um, you can instead tap the back of your phone to actually scroll down. So to do this, you need to um, head into your settings again, head into accessibility again, which is the menu that we've already been on. Then you want to go into touch. And then if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can click on to back tap. Now back tap is literally what it means. I'm sorry, my camera isn't very good at focusing at this point because I'm having to pick up my phone, but literally by tapping the back of your phone, it will scroll it down or it will scroll it up. So um, I'll try my best to show you. So if we're in Twitter, for example, and I tap my phone, can you see it's scrolling down there? You do three and it can scroll up. So that's that's quite a nice feature, as I said, if you find maybe the re repetition of scrolling a little bit too much. OK, the next thing I want to show you on this is how you can change your side buttons. Now, side buttons are really important for turning the volume up and down, for doing things like um, taking a screenshot, but also using things like Apple Pay or Android Pay. So. If you want to change this, because maybe the pincer movement's a little bit painful for you, or you just find that difficult to do, um, you can actually change the, the, sort of the functionality of your side button so it appears on screen. So to do this, again, let me just go back to the beginning so you sort of get a feel of the, the through flow. You wanna head into settings. You wanna go down to accessibility again, which again is the same for Android. Um, and then you want to go down to touch, which is where we were just a moment ago. And then you want to turn on this thing called assistive touch. So what assistive touch does is that it brings up this little funky menu down here, which you actually can move around the place if you wanted to. Now, this menu um, you can completely personalize. So it gives you a sort of it comes out and it gives you six different options that you can choose from. But not only that, you can also change what it means to do when you double tap it and when you long press it. So that's um, so there's lots of different sort of options you can pick from. So I've decided to do it. So if I double tap it, it will do a screenshot. If I long press it, it will go to Apple Pay. So to give you an example of that, so if I double tap it, it'll take a screenshot, which would be the equivalent of doing that if you um, were, were using your side buttons. And if I do a long press, which means just like that, um, it then comes up with, with um, Apple Pay. And that again would be the equivalent of me double clicking it on the side there. So those are just some options for you that allows you to um, just sort of adapt the, the side buttons there. Okay, then if maybe, using your phone, you know, using sort of any kind of touch screen is a little bit too much um, for your hands. Um, there's, there's a whole range of different voice commands that you can do. You can do things like you can open apps by name, you can adjust the volume, you can tap buttons, you can dictate and edit text. I mean, honestly, you can do pretty much anything that you would do with your fingers through just using your voice. And this has got a lot better in recent years because um, conversational information interfaces um, and and the AI behind it is just improved enormously and the more data it gets so the more people use it the better they get at using it now I was using this earlier and I said that and it actually didn't always behave so do bear with if it doesn't always behave but we'll give it a go so um, you want to go back into so this is we're in our settings again I'll just start from the beginning so you get a feel for it so you go into settings you scroll down to accessibility and then you want to go into voice control. So we turn that on. Now we know it's turned on because can you see at the top here, there's a little microphone that has appeared. So this then allows me to control my phone through my voice. Now, a little, little caveat here is that you need to learn the exact commands so your phone does what you want it to do. So a good way of starting to learn the commands is saying this to it. Show me what to say. 
So then I've said that to my phone. I don't need to say any trigger word for it because it's always switched on. It's always listening to me. Um, and these are some of the different things that I can get it to do by, by just using my voice. So then I can say, tap done. Tap done. So that's then done that. Go home. Tap reminders. Tap new reminder. Buy a phone case. Tap done. Go home. Tap safari. Tap go. So on something a little bit more complicated, like a website where you've got lots of different things that you can click on, you can just say to your phone, show numbers. Or maybe you have to say it twice. Show numbers. Show numbers. Got there eventually. So this then gives you a number for everything that you've got on your screen. And then you can literally just say which bit you want to press of it. So um, I'm going to say tap eight. Tap eight. Pop socket. Tap search. Scroll down, show numbers, tap 19, scroll down, scroll down, show numbers, tap 7. OK, so that um, is a little example of how you can go through those different setups. Um, right, let me take you back to my lovely face. So in order to do this, I'm going to switch over to my FaceTime camera. Hello, me. Thank you very much for watching that. Um, oh, let me just actually turn off, turn off my voice control before my iPhone starts doing some crazy things. OK. Um, so once that is all done, what you uh, what, what you then have the ability to do is just fully control your phone with your voice. Now, as you can see, it takes practice. It's not always perfect. But if that really makes a difference to you or if maybe there's a day that you really can't use your hands, then there's that option always there. Right, I just want to show you some accessories that um, can go al along with your phone. So now I'm going to do something called share my screen. So if I go through to this share, which is the little PowerPoint presentation that I've put together. Um, so um, the, as you may have noticed, um, the um, thing that I searched for on Amazon was a pop socket. Now, this is a funky little phone thing that you can put on um, either the back of your phone or an actual case. Um, and it works with Apple or Android. Um, and it very simply is a disc that like pops in and pops out. Um, it's actually quite addictive to like pull it in and out. Um, and you just stick it on the back of your phone and that makes it a lot easier to just hold onto your phone. So you don't actually need to um, use a sort of pincer movement to grip it. Instead, it just sort of sits there a lot nicer. Um, it makes it a lot easier when you're actually using your phone. Um, it makes the phone feel a lot lighter um, and I they're really cheap. They're like six quid or something. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Um, I mean, Amazon's always the place that I go to, um, but they're really, really simple to use. And you don't just have to use that on your smartphone. You can also use it on a tablet. And I just wanted to include this picture of a tablet here as well, because, you know, tablets are a really good option. If you, instead of just using your phone, you wanted a bigger format 
that, then you can use a tablet. And um, I know that um, an iPhone and an iPad link quite seamlessly together. Now, just a word to say, could you, you know, could you maybe replace your phone with a tablet? Um, my answer to that would probably be no, just because um, you need, so for, for your iPad and your phone to sort of talk and to make calls off your of your tablet it needs to still link up with your phone so you still need to have that phone contract and you still need to be sort of paying something to have access to that phone number um, you can get tablets with a sim card which sounds like it could be a normal functioning phone but that just means that you can get connectivity to the internet without having to connect onto wi-fi um, but you still don't get your phone number. Now you could make calls through the internet. So it is sort of possible to do a lot of the apps that you get on your phone, you can still get on your tablet, but to be a complete replacement, I'm not sure if that would work. It'd be more of a great um, thing to have alongside your phone um, if, if, you're, if you're lucky enough to have both. Uh, then I wanted to point you into the direction of these funky little phone cases. Uh, they're called crossbody phone cases. They're all the rage at the moment. Um, they were drawn to my attention actually because my cousin um, is a costume designer and she's like, everybody on set wears one of these. Um, and I also met up with my friend who's a new mum recently and she had one as well. Um, and it very simply is a phone case that has a strap attached to it. You can get them in lots of different designs, lots of different colours. Um, and this is a really good option if you wanted to um you know just have your phone on you so it doesn't get lost around the house so it's always near you when you're out and about you don't have to be going into bags you don't have to be rummaging around for it um it's just a really simple solution there's lots out there at the moment uh, that i think just keeps your phone close so i just wanted to point you in the direction of that um the other thing that you can do is you can link your phones up to um bluetooth keyboard literally any bluetooth keyboard it could be you know the bluetooth keyboard you use for your main laptop or desktop um this this is a quite a nice example of a foldable keyboard as you can see it's not expensive it's only 30 pounds um and it, it just allows you to have a slightly bigger base to be typing off um, in case if you maybe you know you, you find it sort of too much with, with your thumbs um, I would really always recommend Logitech as a brand um, they have lots of and, and this applies to keyboards and mice they're a really good brand um, this is their Bluetooth keyboard that is 55 pounds um, it's a little bit bigger than that foldable one it also could link up to your iPad if you um, were you know using a tablet or any tablet not necessarily really just um, Apple products um, and um, it allows you also if you wanted to because you've got the keys and more functionality you can program your phone and create shortcuts in your phone and actually use the cursors to press stuff so you could end up just using that as your main way of interacting with your phone instead of um, having to use the touch screen okay let me stop my sharing my screen with you um, Right, so I just wanted to quickly show you some of the gadgets that I have in relation to this. You know, it's a bit like show and tell this, isn't it? Um, so this is my Logitech keyboard. Um, it's actually quite old. It's also got a key missing. Um, I use it alongside my iPad um, and it just um, it actually turns into a case for the iPad as well, which is pretty useful. Um, and it just makes it really easy and quick to type on it. Um, and that just uses batteries and they seem to last a long time. I can't tell you exactly how long, so I can't really remember, but long enough that I forget when I last replaced the, uh, the battery on that. So that is that. Um, also, I just wanted to show you a stylus. Um, so this is um, almost just like a pen that has touchscreen capabilities. Um, again, um, if maybe you find it easier holding a pen um, instead of holding, you know, instead of sort of using your fingers on a small touchscreen. Um, this is by a company called 53. It's called 53 Pencil. Um, and what I like about this one is that it's a little bit chunkier than um, your usual styluses that you get through Apple. So um, yeah, th this is a good option. Um, so yeah, that's that's the stylus I recommend. Um, and also just another quick note as we're going into winter that um, touchscreen gloves are really, really important. So you're not having to get your hands out in the cold. Um, I mean, literally everywhere sells them, you can get them really cheap. Um, and that just means that you have that sort of connectivity when you're touching your phone and when you're out and about where you don't have to take your gloves off. Right, um, before we move on to um, our working from home setup, I just wanted to show with you um, a couple of things you can do on apps that may be of 
interest. This is only a very small part of it, but I just wanted to point you in the right direction. So let me switch over now to my trusty uh, Logitech roaming, the roaming cam, I'd like to call it. Um, and what I want to show you is something to do with Google Maps. So, I mean, I'm sure everyone's familiar with using Google Maps. What is brilliant is with Google Maps, if you're going somewhere, so let's say we're off to Buckingham Palace. Oh, excuse me, Google Maps. Do you not know I'm doing a presentation? Don't do that. So let's say we're going to Buckingham Palace um, and you're wanting to do your route. So this is sort of how you do it normally. Um, if you are going by public transport, you can go into this setting at the top here and that allows you to click in route options and then you can press wheelchair accessible. So then what that does is it reroutes your um, route to make sure that everywhere that you're going has lift access that is, is accessible. It's accessible for wheelchairs, but also it means that you're not having to climb stairs. So that's quite a good, a good option if you do want to make sure that you're getting somewhere and you're not having to, you know, suddenly climb 10 flights of stairs. Um, not only that, let's say, um, so, so if firstly, if you, you have to sign into your Google Maps, if you are signed into your Google Maps, you'll see that there's a little profile picture up at the top here. Um, if you then go into settings um, and scroll down, you can go into accessibility and you just want to click on accessible places. And this means that it will show you places that have accessible features like entrances, seating, toilets and parking. So what that then means is that when you are, let's say, you know, let's say you wanted to go to this Sainsbury's, it's got a little wheelchair access sign. So you can scroll down and it then gives you the details of what this has. So this has parking that's accessible and an entrance that's accessible. So again, that's just a nice little point that if you're maybe heading somewhere new or you, you're unsure about, you know, um, whether there'll be toilets that you can access easily, it will give you the details of that. And then finally, um, and maybe you guys are used to using this already, maybe you're not, but um, if you wanted to just sort of, you're going somewhere that you've never been before and you wanted to just check out the route before you arrived there, um, I really recommend trying out Google Street View. So you just need to like sort of press it down like that so your little um, pin is dropped and then can you see here there's a there's a photograph there this then actually just allows you to see exactly the street we're in a very lovely street in London here very posh it looks but it sees, allows you to see exactly the street and the setup of where you're going and you can just sort of double tap and it literally takes you along these routes now this is my trick that when i'm abroad and i'm nervous about driving um and i'm worried about like exactly where i'll be going i literally do the route like this to check that i'm not going to be you know suddenly on a scary mountain road somewhere but i really recommend that as a way of just um familiarizing yourself with a place um to see if again if there's stair access if, if you just feel confident before going somewhere that it's suitable for you and your needs so that's a couple of things with google maps uh, the other thing that I've got to mention um, is Amazon Prime. I mean, do you want to give all your money to Amazon? Do you want them stealing your data? That's probably a separate issue. But what I would say for £7.99 a month, you can sign up to Amazon Prime. And that means that it gets delivered pretty much nearly everything the next day for free or it's included in that monthly price and it can be anything it can be groceries it can be um you know stuff for your office it can be diy stuff i mean it's such a useful thing if you struggle going to the shops or you're going to you know somewhere uh, or you're wanting something niche and you just don't know how to get hold of it i'd really recommend amazon prime and finally and not everybody will have access to deliveroo in the country um or to give you a local supermarket but deliveroo now do groceries so let's say you're at home and you know you wanted to you realize that you've forgotten something and heading out to the shops is just a little bit difficult or you know the person who helps you do your weekly shop isn't around you can get stuff delivered to you in literally 10 or 20 minutes you know and it's not the full um supplies of everything that that waitress has they also have sainsbury's on here you've got whole foods You've got farm drop. I mean, there's lots and lots of different different options for you to choose from. I mean, I do appreciate I'm based in London where there could be more options available. Um, but yeah, there's lots of stuff and it, it literally will turn up in 10 or 20 minutes. Um, and it's not everything you need, but you know, if you're if it is a bit of an emergency and you've forgotten something, then I really, really recommend you to do that. Right. 
I'll put you back onto um, my face. Hello. Um, let's speak about uh, working from home and your office setup. Um, I mean, this past year and a half has seen many, many people uh, now have sort of makeshift offices here, there and everywhere. And I, of all people, I'm literally delivering this basically in my lounge to you know what it's like when you don't quite have the right chair you don't have quite have the right computer set up so I just thought I'd take you through some of the basics and then some of my recommendations so first and foremost it is important I know it's really difficult when you're trying to struggle to find space in your home and you know you're working at a kitchen table and all that stuff but to be in the right position especially if you're working for long periods of time to be sat in the right position with the right posture is incredibly important and this is this is across the board whether you know you you have RA or whether you don't um you know making sure that you have the correct support for your back and for your arms is really really important so just a couple of top liners for you you may be familiar with this stuff already but with your chair you want to make sure that your bottom is right to the very back of the chair and so your hips are far back as you go and you want to make sure that your lower back is supported so you know having just a little cushion at the lower back is really really um, quite an easy fix and it does make it a lot more comfortable your feet need to be completely flat on the floor and your knees need to be in line with your hips so you want that as a nice right angle so you're sort of thinking of you know just like a just just literally a very neutral position with your legs then it's really important that you have arm rests because this really sort of supports your, your shoulders. So you want to make sure that your shoulders are relaxed and that your elbows are in a slightly open position. I mean, I'm exaggerating here so you can see, but you sort of, you want them, um, I mean, I can't really show you without looking like I'm doing it incorrectly, but you want them slightly out going inwards and that would be going inwards to your keyboard. Speaking of keyboard, that needs to be as close to you as possible. So ideally not using a laptop, ideally using a separate Bluetooth keyboard with, with your um, sort of at home work setup. And then your mouse needs to be as close to that as possible. So you want it all quite in a small range in front of you. Um, and you wanna make sure that your wrists and your shoulders, again, there's no sort of like, you're not going up, you're not going down. It's all very in line and nothing sort of flexed or out of, out of position. Now your screen, your actual monitor that you're looking at, that needs to be about an arm's length away. And again, you want your head in a really neutral position. You sort of just want everything as aligned as possible. So you're not looking down, you're not looking up, you're not looking to the side, it's just sort of nicely straight on. So once you've done, got all that, um, let me talk you through some of the things that I've just come across online that I think, again, they're just quite easy wins um, if you wanted to purchase these things to sort of um, um, upgrade your at home office setup. So um, let me now share my screen with you again. OK, so um, this is a 15 pound cushion that um, it's sold on Amazon. I'm sure you can get it elsewhere as well called supporty back um i mean it's slightly disconcerting that they speak about the fresh touch which i think is something to do with fabric but that slightly puts me off it anyway it's very good for your back um it also makes your seat a lot more comfortable if maybe you don't have you know a, a chair that's like got proper foam in it um again nice easy win um this is a monitor stand loads out there on the internet this is the exact one that i actually have um because i quite like the sleek the sleek silver vibes um you can get cheaper ones um for around 10 pounds um, and that just means that you can get your screen at that position that's like nicely in line with your with your eye level. Um, speaking of the screen, so um, if you work off a laptop, it is very easy to get your laptop to link up to a monitor. So that means that your working from home setup could be your laptops on the side, and then you have a HDMI cable, which is the cable you'd need to buy that links your laptop to the monitor. And then what happens is, is that that monitor is just mirroring everything that your laptop's doing. So your laptops is still the brains and it's still your main computer, but the, um, the mirror image allows you to um, just work off a bigger screen. You can have it at the right height and then you can get all your extras. So you can get your, you know, you can add in your keyboard to it, your mouse to the side of it. Um, and that just makes it more of like a, um, sort of a desktop setup. So you're looking for a HDMI cable. And if you're using a, a Mac, Macs notoriously have no um, plug, no, no, no um, a, a plug socket. So you need to get an adapter for that. But again, all that's possible. Google it, find it, will, Amazon will sell it. Um, there's lots of stuff out there. 
Um, this is just very simply a document holder. You could put your iPad on it to have it as more of a second screen. Um, and or if maybe you're having to look at notes and look back again, a lot better for you to have them propped up near your monitor instead of having to look all the way down again. So just again, reducing that amount of movement. Um, this is a footrest. I actually own this footrest um, because I'm quite short and I need it to get my legs at the right position. Can I also say that she is not sat at the right position. Her bum is meant to be way back over that seat. Um, but yes, that is a footrest that, uh, again, really easy win. Um, I mean, it's £28. You can get one even cheaper than that if you need to. Keyboard. So, um, really look for there's some amazing ergonomic keyboards out there and what i mean by that is that they're sort of like shaped and don't look like traditional keyboards to help you um sort of just sort of it helps support your hands as you type um so there's lots of different ones on the market this one is the um microsoft sculpt keyboard it's 70 pounds as you can see it actually has a gap in the middle um and it um, has the um, wrist rest as well attached to it. Um, really good one that I recommend. Um, this one is the Apple Magic Keyboard and it is the one that I currently have. As you can see, I'm a bit of an Apple fan. Um, what I really like about this keyboard is that it is super thin. So it's almost like your wrists don't sort of have to go up at all and it's quite compact so you can you can sort of type without having to stretch or um, sort of maneuver your hands in a way that you know would cause repetitive strain um, it's a little bit more expensive it's a hundred pounds um, and yeah I, I really like it and also just to note that you don't have to have a Mac to use it you can use it with any computer um, and then finally, this is the Logitech Wave keyboard. It's £45, so it's a little bit more affordable. And what I like about this one is that it's really quite big. So you've got a bit more space. So if maybe you, you struggle with dexterity and actually sort of um, hitting the buttons or you press the wrong button sometimes, this will just give you a little bit more space. Um, also, the extra keys you can actually program, to, which allows you to um, change the keys um, so it does various functionality. So if there's certain things that you want your computer to do when you hit that key, you can set that up quite nicely. Just a quick note that you can get a, something called a key guard. Now, this is really for people who prefer to type just with you know, one finger or, or two fingers over two hands. Um, and what that allows you to do, it allows you to be a lot more accurate. It means that you're not hitting keys by accident. So you're not having to continuously press the backspace. Um, and it also allows your hands to just sort of rest above the, um, above the keys whilst they're doing that. Speak about mouses, mices, <laughs> whatever we call them. Um, so with a mouse, um, there's lots and lots of different options out there. These are just three that I sort of wanted to give you um, a variety for you to, to have a little think about. Um, I mean, the best way is to really go into shop and see what feels comfortable. Um, but this is, again, this is a Logitech um, mouse. It's, they're all Bluetooth. And I recommend trying to get a Bluetooth one if you can. So it just means you don't have a wire that then has to be attached to your laptop, especially if your laptop's a bit further away you're using a monitor um, and it just means there's not something else tugging tugging at your your mouse when you're trying to use it so this one's a really small mouse which is great because it means that your hand covers almost the whole thing so you're not having to strain or stress it almost just completely sits on top of it uh, then there's this mouse which is um, really ergonomic um, it's called the hand shoe mouse you can get it um, online uh, there are lots of different retailers so i think curry sell it as well um, and what's brilliant about this mouse is that your fingers don't have to hover above the two buttons. So if maybe that hovering motion of having to keep your fingers up to then click is a bit too much, this just means that they just sit um, sort of over the mouse the whole time and it allows your hand to rest on it. You can move it about and then you can click on it. So that's quite a good one. It's a little bit more expensive at 90 pounds. Um, and then finally, um, this is a Corsair mouse. It's £65. Um, it's actually a gaming mouse. So if you're into gaming, um, it would be really good for that. But what I liked about this one, not only does it have a thumb rest and it's quite ergonomical, it also has programmable programmable buttons so you can actually get it to set to do certain things when you click a certain button when you um you know your, your, your computer can go off and and do something in particular if there's certain routines or certain things that you want to um, load up and you just can do that you can um, program those buttons to do anything through their software okay let me stop my screen share with you um just want to note a couple of other things. 
that if you find your mouse too difficult to use, that a bit like with your phone, um, with your laptop, you can also use um, voice activated software. So you can be using your voice. Mac actually even has a setting, and I haven't used it, so I don't know how intuitive it is to use, that actually uses your camera and you can use gesture control with your head to move the cursor. So there are things out there that allow you to um, interact with this um, stuff that doesn't involve you using a mouse. Um, so one of the ways of doing that is instead using your keyboard and you can go into the settings on both Windows and also um, with your Mac and you can go into accessibility and you can um, change it so you actually control the mouse through pressing the up and down arrows on your keypad. So if you found that easier, then that's a good way to do it. Also, just to note that Google Documents, Google Docs, which um, anyone has access to, it's like exactly like Word, it sits on the cloud online. Um, if you go into there and press tools and then Google Docs, there's voice typing in there. So that allows you to dictate in order to write out a Word document. So maybe if you're doing some longer form piece of work, then you can use that. Um, and there's also some specific industry dictation software out there. I know Dragon is one where if let's say you work in medicine or you're a lawyer or you're using a sort of specific language and it needs to also be um, really private, so privacy to be really um, high, then you can buy those packages as well, which allows you to, again, use your voice instead of having to um, type. Right, um, let's now speak about home assistants. Um, now, this is really a passion of mine because I really enjoy using my Alexa. Um, the, the main two different home assistants out there are your Alexas and your Google Homes, okay? So Amazon Alexa, I've got a little Alexa here. Um, this is the Echo Show. Can you see it again? I've got to lift it up quite high. This is the Echo Show, which comes with a screen. Um, there's all constantly new ones being released. Um, I think this is the Echo Show 5, but I'm sure there's two more that's been out there now. And um, this costs around £100, but you can get the Echo Dot, which is the sort of small, cute one, which I'm sure many of you would recognise. Now, the difference between Google Home and um, Amazon Alexa there's not a lot in it. There really isn't. Um, it's just really whichever one you end up with. I personally prefer Alexa. Uh, not for any particular reason, apart from that's the one I got for my house. And I've sort of got used to her now. Um, I think the AI, uh, you know, behind Alexa and the voice recognition software is brilliant. But then Google's is as well. So it really is completely up to you. Um, I'm going to speak about Alexa, but both these are transferable for, for either of them. So if you get a home assistant, what it allows you to do is it allows you to connect it up to your internet so you, you can use your voice to do certain things, okay? I'm sure most of these you'll be familiar with, but I just want to talk you through one of the main words that, uh, one of the main things that I use Alexa for. So just a quick note that if you've got a new Alexa, um, you need to turn it on and then make sure you download the app because the app sort of links it up and allows it to connect to your Wi-Fi because it needs Wi-Fi access. Then it obviously has to have a wake word. Now, a wake word is basically what it's always listening out for. And when it hears that wake word, it then knows um, what to do next. It then basically records it. And if you're worried about Alexa always listening in, they're not listening in until you say their wake word. And once you say their wake word, then, then they come to life. So I'm going to take her off mute now because otherwise she'd be going crazy at me. And um, so these are just some of the things that I do with my Alexa all the time. So firstly, I set timers. Alexa, set a timer for an hour. One hour, starting now. So that's really useful when I'm in the kitchen. I don't have to go over to something. If I've maybe got my hands full, I can just start that timer and then it shows me exactly how long I've got left on the timer. And um, I can also add things to my shopping list. Alexa, add milk to my shopping list. I added milk to your shopping list. So there we go, that's milk added to the shopping list. Again, when I'm just walking around the house, if I suddenly look into the fridge and go, oh God, I haven't got that, and you wanna add something to your reminders or your to-do list or your shopping list, then you can just put it on that easily. Um, also that works well um, because that then, um, that shopping list goes to your app. So when I'm in the shops, I can see if there's anything added to my shopping list. Um, you can of course play songs, you can put on the radio, you can ask for the news, uh, you can ask it questions. Um, Alexa, what is two ounces in grams? Two ounces is about 56.7 grams. 
Thank you very much. Um, again, that is useful if you're just, you don't want to be finding your phone, if you don't want to be particularly looking something up, um, it just saves you having to walk about the place. Um, this is a feature I use a lot where I say, Alexa, where's my phone? She then calling Georgie. She then knows it's me speaking and knows that it's my number that she needs to call. Alexa, end call. But also, that's an example of how you can use um, uh, Alexa. Oh, she's listening into me. Got to be careful. That's an example of how you can use Alexa to call people. So you can um, drop in on people. You can almost use it as an intercom service for people who also have fellow Alexas, or you can have different Alexas around your house, and you can literally um, ask to make an announcement to another room. So if dinner's ready, if you want to speak to your partner, you can just drop in on them and say, "Oi, come downstairs. I want to speak to you." Now, a big thing with Alexa's also is that you can um, you can link it up to other smart devices so you can start to control more things around your home. Um, so I just want to quickly show you these. These I'm a big fan of. Uh, can you see them? They're called Tapo plugs. Now, these are just smart plugs. They're almost like adapters. So if you can imagine you just stick that into the wall then you've got that there and you stick your plug into there. And now that makes anything that you stick into there a smart device. So I've done it with all my lights. So look, I can show you that if I do this. Alexa, everything off. My lights go off behind me. Alexa, good morning. And then that's a little routine that I've set up that um, means that when it's the morning, all my lights come on again. So you can do these different things that um, you, that allows you to ba basically make anything smart. And that's not just lighting. You could do that with your kettle. You could do that with your straighteners, with the iron, whatever you want. Now, what I love about these is that they're relatively cheap. They're only about £10. Um, so you can buy loads of them and then everything suddenly becomes smart and you can do various things with your Alexa. So I really recommend you checking out the Tapo um, plugs. Um, the other things you can do with this is you can link it up to a kettle so you get your kettle to boil um, it can work with um, your your doorbell so you can see people um, as they arrive on the screen or you could even um, use it to um, uh, like have it, you actually speak to somebody like delivery men that you leave the package outside that kind of thing um, so there's lots and lots of different examples to use with this um, now, before I go on to your questions, because I am very aware of time, it's slipped by, um, I just wanted to just quickly just show two other gadgets that um, may be of use and um, that isn't linked to Alexa. Um, firstly, um, it's smart watches. Um, and these can be anything. This is an Apple watch, which is sort of at the higher end of things, but you can get them really quite cheaply now for around £40. Now, the reason why I say smart watches could be useful is that they're really good for paying for stuff. So you don't actually have to go into your bag you have to find the money open your purse up instead you can have it set up so it's on your wrist and then you can literally tap and pay and that's most most smart watches now have that ability so if that was something that would be useful for you when you're out and about then certainly look into doing that the other thing is and i'm a really big fan of mine is a kindle so an e-reader doesn't necessarily have to be a Kindle. It could be any of the e-readers on the market. Um, and the brilliant thing about Kindles is that it doesn't matter how big or heavy your book is. It always is a very light, manageable size. So again, if you do a lot of reading and you find holding the book, especially if you're like up in bed and it's a bit heavy or on your lap, it's a bit heavy. This is a really good way of reading it. Um, and just a quick note here that it uses something called e-ink. So it's not like a normal screen that gives you glare. Um, instead, it's almost like these, these little magnetic um, particles that draw the ink to where the word sits. So when you turn it on, and there is a bit of a backlight, but you can turn that off if you want to, it actually does look like a normal page. So that's why Kindles um, are really good. Instead of, instead of feeling like you're reading off a screen, you actually feel like you're reading off a normal piece of paper. So those are just some other things that I wanted to point in your direction. Okay, I don't, not all my lights have come on. I've sort of got a weird lighting now. I've turned all my lights off, but anyway. That's either here or there. Um, I appreciate we haven't got that much time left. But I know you guys have sent in some questions. So I thought I'd just quickly 
rattle through some stuff um, and give you some answers if I haven't already covered that. Um, so um, somebody's written in, I use my gadgets, particularly my iPhone, too much. Me too. What tips do you have for better time management? Now, this was going to be a whole section I was going to do in this talk because I know that the theme for RA Week is mindfulness. And I have a lot of stuff about how you can be mindful about your gadgets and technology. Um, but it just I couldn't fit it in in the time that we have. Um, so just a quick rundown of things that I have done recently to stop me using my phone or stop me getting lost in my phone for hours at a time. Firstly, I've stopped notifications, specifically for WhatsApp and emails. Um, I've just stopped it. It's not the end of the world. I can, people can still call me. And if I don't get a notification and see it straight away, that's OK. I don't have to respond back to everyone immediately. So stopping notifications is a big one. Um, the next thing is, and this links into the theme nicely, is being mindful about why you're picking up your phone. Um, often I find it's because I'm bored or it's just a habit or it's just because it's there. Or I'm a bit stressed and I want to think about something else. So really being mindful about why you've picked up your phone um, and then think, right, what else could I do instead? Do I actually just need to go for a lunch break? Do I need to read something? Do I need to go for a walk? whatever it may be having a couple of things as a backup to do instead of just sitting for the next half an hour on a timeline scrolling aimlessly and then finally create little speed bumps and what I mean by this is you just want to slow yourself down from picking up your phone constantly and then just mindlessly going on it so move your apps move your apps into folders so it's harder for you to get access to them you can create passwords you can create set time limits you can actually delete certain apps so it forces you if you're going to go on Instagram to actually go onto the website which is not nearly as fun as just going onto the app um, and also, finally, if I'm doing concentrated work, I just don't have my phone near me for set periods of time. Um, and also, I don't have my phone in my bedroom. I use a traditional alarm clock. So I know I've rattled through some points there, but those are the things that because I have been thinking about this a lot uh, that I've been doing with my phone recently. Um, are there any different types of ergonomic mouse you would recommend? I feel like I've covered that already. Um, just something else to note in there is that um, the um, Apple have a trackpad too, which is like a sort of pad that looks like that, that you can actually just use your finger on. Um, maybe that would be better for you. I don't know. Um, but just bear that in mind if you're looking for something. Next question. Um, sometimes typing can be difficult, especially on a small laptop keyboard. Are there any gadgets or applications you would recommend to make typing easier? Yes, I think all the ergonomic keyboards that I recommended um, and definitely, definitely just even if you don't have the screen, just buy a separate keyboard and link it up via Bluetooth. So you just can have your laptop screen and then have a separate keyboard. It's, it's quite a, a, an affordable way of doing it. Next question. Uh, my phone is quite heavy and I've seen attachments people use. Are there any types you'd recommend for someone whose hands and wrists are hurting? Um, yes, the pop socket for me is my favourite. There are other cases as well that just sort of make your phone a bit bigger and a bit easier to hold. That's the one that I find that just um, doesn't add that much weight and makes it the easiest to hold on to. Um, my laptop touchpad is too oversensitive and it moves without me touching it sometimes is there a way to change its sensitivity or turn it off completely absolutely there is um, you just need to go into system preferences on your mac which i i, I assume you have a mac maybe you don't but either way you need to go into the the little find the little cog on your computer um, and then you can change the tracking speed okay so it's quite easy to do again google is your best friend type in your your the software that your your computer runs off and type in how to change over sensitive touchpad and lo and behold the answer will be there um, are there any VR glasses that you'd recommend that are easy to put on and off and adjust with your hands? Also, do they accommodate for poor eyesight and adjust? Well, I have the Oculus Quest 2, which is good because it's quite light, but it's still quite heavy. I mean, that's, I think, goes across the board for any VR headsets. They can still be quite heavy and they can sort of weigh quite heavily down on your nose and face. Um, I would say that would be your best bet because it's not tethered to anything um, and it's sort of just the latest one that's out there at the moment. Um, do they accommodate for poor eyesight and adjust? They don't, but I do know people that can actually still wear their glasses with the headset on and they've done that successfully. I've never tried it, but I know people who have. 
Um, I appreciate we are nearly out of time. So I'm just going to do one more question. Um, are there any designs or styles of plugs or attachments that can help unplug, plug them so you aren't pulling the cord? Yes, there are loads. Um, when I had a little look on this, I went to um, my favorite website, Amazon. I, am I sponsored by Amazon today? I've mentioned their products so much. Um, and um, there's something called plug tugs, plug pullers. But basically, if you just type in literally plug attachment for arthritis, you will get so many different options. And these particular ones looked really good. Um, you get a pack of 10 for 10 pounds. And on that note, I just wanna say that if you just go onto Amazon or any sort of websites like that and just type in arthritis gadgets, or I know there was a question which I'm afraid I haven't got time for about kitchen gadgets. Um, you know, if 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 you just type in kitchen gadgets for arthritis, you'll see so many different options on there. Um, and I think it's really worth just having a peruse and, and see which ones, um, you know, tick the box and make it easier for you. I know I've just given you so much information. I've just sort of thrown it at you and I haven't stopped talking for the past hour. So um, I hope that it's been helpful to you guys. I hope that you've got something out of it. Um, but if you do have any follow up questions, then please do just send me a message or find a, find a way of um, telling the NRAS team and I'm sure they'll be able to pass it on to me. Um, I just want to again reiterate, thank you so much for listening. Um, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of RA Awareness Week. It's been such a pleasure to be talking to you today. Now I know I think Anita's going to suddenly pop on and speak to me. Is that right Anita?